Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss how Leanderthal has once again exposed himself as a massive fraud, as well as how some conservative candidates are attempting to mislead their constituents as well. So the latest idiot child level con trick from Leanderthal is presenting what appears to be a poll prediction for his constituency of Ashfield, in which it looks like he's going to win the election there. Only the man done goofed. First of all, he didn't bother to crop the bit at the top, showing that it was a user-defined poll. In other words, one where he fed in the numbers himself. But even if he hadn't been that thick, people would have spotted the deception anyway, because the actual electoral calculus shows these results. Labour first, although with Leanderthal's Reform UK a close third behind the Ashfield independents. But that's boring. Why don't I just do what 30p Lee did and use my own user-defined poll for Ashfield? Oh, look, it would appear that Reform UK are really lagging behind now. Amazing what you can do when you just make up your own numbers. Needless to say that he had his tweet community noted to point this out and yet has still left the post up, so far anyway. Not sure what fact-checking exists on Facebook or Instagram if he's posted the same thing on those platforms. Mind you, he probably went a bit mad with the numbers. He's trying to give the impression that he's so far ahead that maybe undecided voters can just go, oh, well, I can just stay at home. I don't need to vote for Lee then. And maybe that would have the reverse impact for Labour tactical voters, you know, to make sure that they turn up to vote. So I'm not sure he's done himself any favours with just how far ahead he's put himself with his made up poll. But nonetheless, once again, exposed himself as a fraud. Let us not forget how Lee Anderson first introduced himself to the political community. Back in 2019, when he was the Conservative candidate for the Brexit election, he got a friend to pretend to be an ordinary swing voter so that Lee Anderson could pretend to convince him to vote Conservative with a Daily Mail camera crew in tow. Unfortunately, he forgot that his microphone was still on when he rang the mate up to set up the scam in advance. So the very first introduction of him outside Ashfield was as a fraud. And let's not forget the fraud he pulled last year against his own party this time, or his own party at the time anyway, he moves about quite a bit. He told the chief whip, Simon Hart, that Richard Tice was attempting to bribe him to defect to Reform UK. Now, although we can never know what might have been said, if anything, between Tice and Anderson, the specific claims of the bribery seemed difficult to believe because there'd be a high chance of Tice being caught and facing serious criminal charges. However, doesn't matter. It did what Anderson wanted. Fearing how defections to Reform UK would look, Rishi Sunak made Anderson deputy chair of the Conservative Party, and then Anderson used that enhanced status to secure a gig on GB News. The former miner, who had been used to getting by on a low to middle income, was now in the top 1% for income. Of course, Anderson doesn't have a monopoly on deceitful behaviour. Lots of Conservative candidates have been trying to con their own constituents as well, even if not being caught looking quite so corrupt. The latest is a Conservative candidate, Robbie Moore. Not that you'd know he was the Conservative candidate from this endorsement, as it uses the red of the Labour Party rather than blue of his own party. For the last couple of years now, Conservatives have been increasingly dropping their party's distinctive blue colouring for something else, often green. That way they get to claim, oh, it's, it's House of Commons green, you know. I'm an MP, you know. So I, 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 it's House of Commons green, which was always a weak argument because they weren't doing this when the poll start, until the poll started to say they were going to lose the election. Like, why weren't they doing this years ago then? Why did it only happen when the polls flipped? And I've seen the odd one still doing it now, where it makes even less sense, because they're not MPs now. Parliament's been dissolved for the election. There are no MPs. So any candidates still using that green, which are from the Conservative Party, do not even have that tissue-thin argument this time. And really, this should prompt a review into electioneering conduct. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The good chap theory of politics doesn't work anymore. We've been working on the basis of conventions so far, rather than hard and fast rules, on the understanding that politicians are fundamentally decent people. 
Now, I'm not sure you've ever really been able to say this is true, but at least they used to observe some sensible boundaries. They had their own code of moral conduct. Now they don't, or some don't. We have a new breed of politician who have seen people like Donald Trump and Boris Johnson get away with the most insane trashing of democratic norms and not really suffer ill effects as a result. I think we now need to codify a few of these conventions, get a commission to look at various practices which could mislead voters, using colours associated with other major parties rather than their own is an obvious one, creating campaign literature which is disguised as a local newsletter, that's another commonly used one. I also think maybe there needs to be a rule that the name of the party has to be prominently displayed on all campaign material now. There's, there's nothing wrong in theory with just having the name of the candidate if the colour is used to indicate the party, but given that this isn't happening, I'd just make them put the name of the party on. Perhaps even ban campaign literature featuring the local candidate from having the name of other parties or pictures of people from other parties. You allow it for more general campaign material perhaps, but not where the local candidate features. There are legitimate uses of this practice, but it is being abused and I'd rather close off some legitimate uses that are not really necessary in order to block off all illegitimate uses. And given Labour's plans to address mistrust in politics, there could actually be an expectation that something like this takes place at some point. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.